Rudy Valley, Mary Livingston, Jack Benny, Donna Michi, Charlie McCarthy, Edgar Bergen, The Seven Dwarves, Snow White, Cecil B. DeMille, Walt Disney, Pinky Tomlin, Fred Allen, Portland Hoffer, and more. Featured songs include Eddie Cantor, Getting Some Fun Out of Life, Rudy Valley, Orange Blossom Time, and Pinky Tomlin, I Want to Be in Winchell's Column. As always, this soundscape consists of best of clip reels I compiled from old time radio broadcasts, as I do research and writing for the When Radio Ruled historical documentaries. The highlights of this soundscape are Snow White and the Seven Dwarves with Charlie McCarthy, and Jack Benny and Fred Allen going at it in a fine example of their radio feud. These excerpts are offered without further commentary for your entertainment and education. Here are voices from 1937. Voices sadly now silenced. Great performers living again because you're listening to them perform live now. I come along, there ain't been enough traffic cops on the road to romance. When you consider the dangerous curves and the soft shoulders, think how many people try to make it a three-lane highway. <laughs> Makes you stop and think. What a public service this is. What a... Pu- hey, Phil. Yes. Yeah. You busy? No, sir. Take a letter. Yes, sir. W. No. <laughs> I want to dictate. I is, you, di- is you a dictator, please, sir? Well, yes, I am a dictator. I'm the Mussolini of matrimony, the Hitler of happiness, the... Uh, take this down. Yes. Well, uh, what type of girl did you have in mind as your spouse? As my what? Spouse. Why don't you set a trap for it? <laughs> what kind of a wife are you looking for? Well, how about me with? She taken? <laughs> <laughs> she was last night. <laughs> <laughs> Fifi, have you told Fifi all about Santa Claus? Santa Claus? Santa Claus? Sure, Fifi. Haven't you heard about him? Santa Claus is a man with gray whiskers who gives things away. Oh, the man with gray whiskers who gives things away. Yes. You know, in France, we call him Uncle Sam. <laughs> no, Fifi, you must have seen pictures of Santa Claus. He's a fellow with a big bag on his back. Oh, Uncle Sam, he's holding the bag too, Miss Yeah, you better is. You better is. You better is. Uncle Sam, he does not get anything for Christmas. Nothing for Christmas. Don't be silly, Uncle Sam. He's getting a lovely apology from Japan. Oh, oh yeah. And that's about all. Tell me, is it really that good? Mr. Cantor, as far as America is concerned, this is the greatest water in the world. No, Mr. Hudson. Right now, as far as America is concerned, the greatest water in the world is the water that separates America from Europe. Believe me. (laughs) When we want to love, we love. When we want to kiss, we kiss. With a little padding, we're getting some fun out of life. When we want to work, we work. When we want to play, we play. In a happy setting, we're getting some fun out of life. Maybe we do the right thing. Maybe we do the wrong. Spending each day just winning our way along. When we want to sing, we sing. When we want to dance, we dance. You can do your bedding. We're getting some fun out of life. When you get to feeling low, just turn on the radio. Be a dial twister and mister, you'll find fun in life. If you're sick of taking bumps, if you're feeling in the dumps, simply flip the dial and smile at some comic's joke. Maybe it will be Jack Benny, Tanner or Fibber McGee. Of course, I won't kick if you happen to pick on me. There's a million laughs and quips waiting at your fingertips. Be a tuner in her, a grinner, and you'll find that your mind will clear up and cheer up, and you'll get some fun out of life. Thank you all. Did you ever watch a Skyliner take off? Thousands of people visit the airports just to see these giant ships roar across the field and rise into the air. Competent man, the pilot at the controls, isn't he? Yes, but you don't see the scores of men who checked that Skyliner, circled around it with watchful eyes. 
turned it over to the pilot in perfect shape. The ground crew gave that Skyliner circle service. Thousands of Texaco dealers from coast to coast are the ground crew for your car. For when you stop for Fire Chief Gasoline, they circle service your car for safer, more economical driving. Hi ho, everybody. This is Rudy Valley and Company. As Graham said, we want you to listen to us for 60 minutes to give us 3,600 seconds of your extremely valuable time. Radio workers who live, move, and have their being in the shadow of a split-second stopwatch are likely to learn a very real appreciation of the golden value of time with a capital T. We count seconds as most people count hours. And so we realize when we stop to think the preposterous impertinence of asking some 15 million people each to yield up 60 out of their strictly limited store of minutes, a whole sweet hour apiece out of 15 million lives. To ask for and get 15 million man hours of attention involves a literally awful responsibility. Anyone who wastes that much precious human time deserves to be shot at 29 seconds past dawn the next morning. However, if we amuse you, make you forget your workaday cares for a while, make you grin, set your toes to tapping in tempo to our music, even make you think a little, then we are justified. We have discharged our responsibility. We hope tonight that we have manufactured a satisfying content for 60 minutes with the assistance of the following people. I can see you and I As we were in days gone by When the mighty organ played Oh, promise me I was yours, you were mine It was orange blossom time When the mighty organ That ring upon your finger will forever linger in my memory. Though the years roll away, you're as sweet as yesterday when the mighty organ played a oh, promise. Betty Lou. Say, Jack, I hear you're going to visit Fred Allen on his program Wednesday night. Is that right? Yes, I am, Mary. I've got a business deal on with him. Uh, what's it about, Jack? Oh, you find out. Is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? I ain't talking. La, 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 la. This mystery will be continued next Wednesday. Good night, folks. <coughs> Welcoming you for Nelson Eddy. Oh, Mr. Amici. Yes, Charlie. I had a funny experience coming over here today. Uh, uh, just I'll... a minute, Charlie. Uh-huh. Not now. Greetings, too, oh. from Dorothy Lamour, the I Stroud was, twins, uh... from Edgar Bergen and Charlie I was, McCarthy. Uh, I was coming out of the drugstore, and a fellow said to me, he says, hello, Charlie. See, I didn't recognize him at the first. <laughs> so I looked at him, and he said... A hearty welcome, too, uh, from Robert Arm Brewster, the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra, yes, and from uh... our guest, Billy Mock, of the famous Screen Mock Twins, and through the courtesy of Walt Disney... The voices behind the screen characters of the first full-length cartoon feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yes, 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 yes. So, so I says to me, I says... We hey, hope that you will enjoy hey, our show. A guy can't get a word in here, age-wise. So this fella says to himself... We hope that you will it. enjoy our show and that throughout the week... All right, you... you win. And throughout the week, you'll enjoy... Chase and Sanborn Coffee. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, Charlie, what was that you wanted to tell me? Uh, well, this fella says... I said to the fella, he's... Uh, 
Doggone it, I forgot it now. <laughs> well, then, doggone it, we'll carry on. All right. So, Charlie? Yeah, yes, it was, it was, yes. It was such a nice song. And Mr. Eddie has such a fine voice. And you're such a nice fellow, Mr. Amici. And it's so near Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and you're such a nice boy, Charlie. Yeah, am not I? I try to be goodly. Yes, yeah. yeah, Charlie, you've tried, but I don't think you've quite succeeded. Now, Bergen, what have I done now? Well, <clears throat> I, I would like to have you explain why all that racket happened downstairs in the sitting room last night. Uh, racket, Bergen? Yes. Oh, is it so? Yes. I heard a terrible racket, didn't you? Well, no. I guess I was so busy making it, I didn't listen. I didn't really. Well, what I want to know is what caused it. Well, if you must know, Skinny Dugan and I, uh, we were fixing the chimney uh, for Santa Claus. Oh, you were? Yeah, fixing the chimney. Yeah, that's right. Yes. What were you fixing? Well... I say, what were you fixing? Yeah. Well, now, you won't be sore. No, I won't be sore. All right. Uh, we, we were putting a trap door in a fireplace. A trap door? Yeah. <laughs> You don't mean to catch Santa Claus. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> and we put a burglar alarm in the chimney. A burglar alarm? Yeah. Yes. Well, why did you do that? Well, he got away from us last year. <laughs> this year, we want to talk things over with him on the home ground. I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, didn't Santa Claus give you anything last year? Uh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. He gave me the runaround. He did. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, the runaround. Yes. Oh, I, I see. Well, why are you blushing, Bergen? All right. <laughs> Never mind that, Charlie. Where did you get this silly idea of putting a trapdoor for Santa Claus? Well, I got it from Skinny Dugan. You see, last year, Skinny put a woodchuck trap in the chimney. See? Yes, a woodchuck trap. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and did he catch Santa Claus? Uh, no, no. But the funniest thing happened. Skinny's father limped around the house for three weeks. <laughs> 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 oh, Amused me. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you must be mistaken, Charlie. Yeah. But I want to remind you that Santa's only purpose is to make people happy. Oh, sure, 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 sure. But it is possible for even him to make a mistake. Oh, quite so, yes, yes. Well, I've, I've written a letter to Santa Claus clearing things up. Oh, yes. I itemized it this year. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, uh, I would like to read it to you. To me? Yes. I want you to check on the grammatical errors and just to see if I've asked for enough. I... <laughs> you want to read it to me? Yes. I, I think that's very amusing. Yes. <laughs> I think it's subtle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead, read the letter. Yes, yeah, very good, sir. Here it is. Here. <clears throat> uh, uh, Mr. Claus, dear sir. Now, wait a minute. Mr. Claus. Yeah. Yes. Why don't you start it? Dear Santa. Uh, why should I humor him? Oh. <laughs> very well. Read what you've got. All right, I will. Yes, here it is. <clears throat> uh, dear sir, please give this order your special attention. For last year, you certainly... Gummed it up. Yes. But I am willing to let bygones be bygones. See, that's in the last year. But speaking of last year, see, it doesn't hurt to rub it in a little, no. It was awful nice of you to stop at my house and to come down the chimney. But I am sorry you went to so much trouble to leave so little. <laughs> So much trouble to, uh, yes, at least so little. And I do mean you. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I do mean you, yes. I wore my stockings three days before I discovered you had left anything in them. <laughs> God, aren't you ashamed of yourself writing such a letter to Santa Claus? Yeah. Well, go ahead, read what you have. Yeah. What are you asking for? Oh, here it is, here it is. Uh, three, three days, I guess. Oh, here you go. I hope you will leave me a roadster and a shotgun and a camera. And I hope you will leave me a speedboat. I hope this letter finds you in good health. Yes, I think you're asking for entirely too much. Yes, too much. Too much. Uh-huh. All right. 
Uh, we leave off the good health. <laughs> Darling, it hurts me to see a boy as young as you are taking such a selfish attitude towards Christmas. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Such greed comes in and steals the beauty from the true spirit of Christmas. Oh, sure, sure, sure. And results not only in disappointing yourself, but in losing the friends you have won. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Now, let me repeat. I heard it the first time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I... Mm-hmm. What's this argument about, Edgar? Well, Don, what do you think of a boy who thinks of Christmas only in terms of how much he will profit by it? Well, frankly, Edgar, not very much. Mm. To me, the spirit of Christmas is the joy of giving. Oh, do tell. <laughs> What are you giving me, Miss Jimmy? <laughs> no, Charlie, that's exactly the wrong attitude. What Don is trying to say is, what are you giving? Isn't he selfish? No. <laughs> well, now that you're asking, I'll tell you. I'm giving... Yes, Charlie, what are you giving? I'm giving you fellas an opportunity to buy a choice selection of Christmas cards. Oh. The prices are sacrificed at only $5 a dozen. Oh, I see. Yes. $5 a dozen. Yes. Yes. And by sheer coincidence, I happen to have a dozen with me. <laughs> and if we want two dozen? Two dozen, yes. Well, by sheer coincidence... All right, all right. <laughs> no. No. Well, five dollars a dozen is very high. Don't you? You're sure I do. After all, the purpose of a card is only to express a sentiment. I know, but you fellas, you don't want cheap sentiment, do you? <laughs> That's beside the point. The real value of a car is the thought behind it. Well, the thought behind it is for me to get five dollars. <laughs> All right, Charlie, I'm sold. I'll take one. Oh, fine. One doesn't. One no, doesn't. no, wait a minute. One car. Uh, one car? Yeah. Well, they, they, they sell for five dollars a dozen. That's the way they sell. I know that, but I want one car. You still want one car, I do. Yeah. Uh-huh, well, that means breaking it up a little here. <laughs> uh, see, it's nice to see that all your friends... Uh, well, uh, uh, if anybody is so... St- never... No, no, no. <laughs> this is going to take uh, too long, Charlie. I won't take any. Yes. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, no, no, no. The customer is right. Yes. Uh, 12, 12 goes into 5. 12... Well, it doesn't go. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, my boy says... says, says Fine, fine, you move with that small point. <laughs> Are you sure you couldn't get rid of 12? <laughs> one card, Charlie. Well, it seems to be... Oh, no, no, he's not here. Not here. <laughs> if one's my phone for him, one is five. All right, what is it? It comes out exactly five dollars a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might at least let us take a look at these cards first. Oh, yes, sir, read, gentlemen. As smart a collection as you've ever seen. Well, wait a minute, Charlie. Some of these cards look used. Is that so? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, now, there may be a couple of trade-ins, yes. <laughs> but they're as good as new, gentlemen, as good as new. They've been overhauled, new corners put on them. <laughs> and they're sold to you with a new card guarantee. Is that so? Yes. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Charlie. Here are four Happy New Year cards for 1935. They're no good now. Oh, is that so? Uh, 1935, uh-huh. Well, if it ever, ever comes back, you're set, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, these cards are engraved and embossed. Yes. Well, here's a Valentine card. Yes, sir, we don't overlook a thing. <laughs> to say nothing of the engraving and the embossing. Yes, Charlie. And there are other people's names on these cards. There are, huh? Yes. It's probably embezzled, too. Oh, yes, sir. Gentlemen, nothing but the best. They're engraved, embossed, and embezzled. Five dollars a dozen. <laughs> Mr. Bergen, what are those little fellows, goblets? No, the word is goblins, Charlie. Uh, that's what I said, goblins. No, 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 goblins. And besides, they're not goblins, they're dwarfs. Well, make up your mind, Bergen. Charlie, you are being highly honored tonight. Yeah? Yes, sir. For the first time, the seven little dwarves have stepped out of the pages of the story Snow White to pay you a visit. Is that so? You mean Snow White from Grimm's fairy tales? Yes. Charlie, Walt Disney has brought them to life on the screen, and you're going to have the first opportunity to meet them. Aren't the dwarves cute? Yeah, they are. They're almost as cute as me. Charlie. Huh? As cute as I. All right. As cute as you, Bergen. <laughs> but you're spoiled. Oh, my. 
Charlie, once upon a time, there were seven little dwarfs who always sang while they worked. Do you like to sing while you work? Well, I, uh, I like to sing. You like to sing? Yes. <laughs> that's just that. Oh, that's just that. <laughs> Go to work, fellas. <laughs> When there's too much to do, don't let it bother you. Forget your troubles, try to be a Groucho and Harpo? No, no. <laughs> Grumpy, this is Charlie McCarthy. So what? Oh, real little fellow, isn't he? Yes. Hello, Grumpy. Nice day we're having, huh? Yeah, what's nice about it? Had too much sun this week. Oh, well, last week was all right, eh? Yeah? Had too much rain last week. Oh, nice person to have around, isn't he? <laughs> what kind of weather do you like? I don't like any kind of weather. I don't like you either. All right, one subject at a time now. <laughs> I can't waste my time talking to you. I'm leaving. Yeah. So long, Starpuss. <laughs> Charlie, huh? this little dwarf is Sneezy. Oh, hello. Well, why do they call you Sneezy? I don't know. I, I guess it's just because I... I can... <laughs> just me. <laughs> oh. oh, so that's it, huh? Yeah. Anyhow, Charlie... I'm pleased to... I'm pleased to know... To know... To know... Well, I'm pleased to meet you. What's the matter with you? I have a... Uh, I have a... Hey... Uh, hey... 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 Uh, hey... Hey, nanny nanny and a hot choo choo. <laughs> I mean, I'm pleased to meet the police. I'm pleased to greet. I'm uh, uh, I'm pleased to. Uh, uh, I'm sorry I met you. <laughs> you're you're a nice little sap. I mean, uh, a nice little tramp. A uh, slice little flat. A uh, flight. A uh, flip. Fla- I mean, a uh, an ice pack. I mean, you uh, uh, put on your brakes. I think you passed it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I I've got to glow now. I mean, I've got to, I've got to go. A uh, gold. Uh, the, it's the mean queen. I mean, the mean the queen meanie. Uh, the eeny meeny miny mo. Uh, no, the. The queen meat, the meat is, she's approaching. I've got to glow. Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, you'll find out. I've got fleas. I mean, I've got to flee. Flee, yes. Yeah. Charlie Duck was trying to tell you that the queen is here. Well, he certainly did it a hard way. Oh, <laughs> Bring on the queen. Where is she? Well, uh, you won't like her, Charlie. No, no. She turns to a witch and kills people. Really? Yes. Yes, she's very jealous, and she's jealous of Snow White, and she's trying to kill her. She's even gone so far as to put poison in apples. Well, that's going too far. 
<laughs> My goodness, well, she can't get away with that, queen or no queen. Did you call me? Oh, no. I am the queen. I am beautiful, the most beautiful in all the land. I am beautiful. Uh, Bergen, I, I think she thinks she's beautiful. <laughs> I know I am beautiful, for I have a mirror that tells me the truth. Wait, I shall prove it. This is my mirror. What wouldst thou know, my queen? Holy smoke, Bergen, the mirror talks. <laughs> I am the mirror. I can tell only the truth. You may ask me anything you wish. All right, I will. Who is the handsomest man in all the land, and why am I? <laughs> you are uh-huh. not. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hold on there, Mir. Don't, now, don't start casting reflection. But on. I am the most beautiful in all the land. <laughs> am I not, my mirror? Alas, my queen... Snow White is far more fair than thou. Ah, then it is true. But twill not be for long. Snow White shall die. What was that noise? Where did the queen go? I told you, Charlie, she practices the art of witchcraft. Oh, sometimes she's a queen and sometimes a witch. Well, which is which, really? (laughs) The queen is a witch. Now watch out for her. Yeah, witch or no witch, I'll take care of Snow White. Oh, thank you, Charlie. You will protect me from the queen? Are you Snow White? Why, yes, I am. Oh, well, believe me, the mirrors certainly speak the truth. Snow White, you're a knockout. (laughs) Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Oh, that's nothing. (laughs) Take my advice, Snow White, and beware of poisoned apples. Did I hear somebody say anything about apples? (laughs) Won't you buy... My bright red apple. Oh, isn't it pretty, Charlie? That's the most beautiful apple I've ever seen. Uh, uh, don't touch it. Bergen, it's the queen changed to a witch, and she thinks I don't know it. <laughs> oh, please. May I have the apple, Charlie? Yes, why, I'll buy the pretty apple for you. I've got my money in my coat in the closet. Follow me, kind old lady. <laughs> I'm a kind old woman, and Snow White will soon eat the poison apple. <laughs> Sweet kid, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. That's what you think. Step right. Lock it, lock it, lock it, or it. Why did you get me in this closet? Let me out of here. I want to talk to the governor. Uh, it won't do you any good. Walt Disney is the only one that can release you. <laughs> I'll poison you yet. <laughs> A lot of sneering going on around here. <laughs> oh, Snow White. Yes, Charlie. My Prince Charming. Oh, Snow White. Drift a little closer. Oh. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful, Grumpy? Well, I hate to admit it, but I like him. What do you think, Stacey? I think he's... Uh... <laughs> what do you think, Tom? <laughs> well, in, uh, in behalf of the seven, cor- uh, the seven uh, course, I mean, uh, well, I want to show my latitude, uh, my attitude, uh, my lunge. Uh, I want to... Uh, 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 Smote, mention it. I mean, don't mention it. Uh, Smote, uh... Oh, that's just so long. <laughs> uh... I ever tell you how I trailed Wilhelm Smorgasbord? The international jewel thief, Sal? Huh? But I had to let him go? Yes, for several times. Oh. <laughs> What's the odds? I tell it different every time. <laughs> well, Sir Sill, that was way back in 1898. Or no, it was 1889 it was. Yeah. Or was it? No, I think it was 1901. Well, or I... maybe ought to. Let's see now. In 1897, I was an athlete at Princeton playing third jerk on the tug-of-war team. <laughs> Charlie McCarthy was only an acorn in 1899. (laughs) Well, anyway, I trailed him to the Grand Central Station in New York where he caught a train for Philadelphia with me right behind him. Yes. I seen he noticed me, so I slipped into a disguise and pretended to be a coal miner. He was still suspicious, particularly after he felt my muscle. But I told him I was a soft coal miner and got away with it. (laughs) Well, sir, I switched disguises 17 times during the trip, and that done it. He got away. 
How, Miss McGee? Well, every time I got into a new disguise, the conductor charged me another fare. When I went broke, they heaved me off the train at Trenton. Well, sir, I never will forget. Come in. Hollywood, land of perpetual sunshine, December roses, and rising temperatures, is going to have a snow-white Christmas. Yes, it's true. But before I completely confound our Chamber of Commerce, let me explain myself. Tomorrow night in the Carthy Circle Theater, scene of epic Hollywood premieres, another chapter in motion picture history will be written when Walt Disney presents the first full-length animated film ever made, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. For giving us Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and the Silly Symphonies, the world owes Walt a great debt. He was the first to make animated cartoons in sound and then in color. And with Snow White, he pioneers once again in a picture that took three years to make and involved more than two million individual drawings. Walt is standing beside me now. I should say he's quaking beside me now. He's nervous, trembling, and out of breath. Buck up, Mr. Disney. What's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing much. Except I've been running around circles so long, it's getting to be a habit. Carthy circles? Well, that's just one of them. I think I've got stage fright. No, you've got premier fright, which is much worse. <laughs> you ought to know you've produced and opened more than 200 pictures. Yes, and I'm just as scared the 200th time as I was the first. But I hear Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is the screen's greatest innovation in years. Well, your own first full-length picture, The Squaw Man, was considered quite a departure. After all, people had only seen two reelers up to then. <laughs> so I can forgive your condition tonight even though you look as though you've done all the work yourself. Oh, far from it. If I had tried to make this picture by myself, working eight hours a day and going to a sanitarium for two weeks each summer, it would have taken me 250 years. And you figured that wasn't quite fast enough. Anyway, lots of luck. Pardon me, did you say lots of lucks? I said luck. <laughs> but the name Snow White suggests Lux Flake. So uh, that Lux Flake maybe, maybe played some part in your production. Well, I'm grateful to Lux Flakes. They made Snow White a household word to women who washed their own fine things, long before I ever thought of putting her on the screen. I also understand that Lux Flakes play a big part in cutting, cutting down Hollywood's wardrobe bill, which reminds me how costly a young lady Snow White was to clothe. We figure her costumes cost about $100,000. Just a minute, Walt. How do you figure that when all our costumes were made with paint and brush? But it's true. Even though she wears only two dresses, and both of them are drawings. You take the salary of the artists and the animators, and there are hundreds of them. The cost of the paints, color, photography, and technicolor, and little Snow White's two dresses add up to $100,000. The cost of our entire picture is almost as much as your own new film, <laughs> The Buccaneer. And yet you didn't have to pay the salary of a single star. We who produce pictures with human beings figure their salaries alone consume 25% of our budgets. So with a million and a half dollars invested, I can understand in more ways than one why you may be nervous. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be normal if I weren't nervous. But Snow White is a goal we've been aiming at for ten years. There won't be any Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck to attract the people. They'll all be brand new characters. I suppose after Snow White is successfully launched, you'll sit back and take it easy for a while. 
Are you going to stop work after the Buccaneer? Huh. I haven't begun to work yet. Well, we won't stop either. It's just the beginning for us. We're going to make more feature-length animated productions and try to make use of all that we've learned in the three years required to produce Snow White. We don't think we know so much even now, and we're using all the outside advice we can get. What sort of outside advice? Well, there's Sidney Franklin, for example, a man who directed Good Earth. He seems to think our cartoon medium is important, and he's offered to work with us in directing Bambi, the famous story of the little deer. We've also started work on Pinocchio. Yeah, but what's going to happen to Mickey and Minnie and Donald Duck? Oh, they'll continue to be just as important as they've ever been. We wouldn't dream of anything else. But we're growing, Mr. DeMille, and experimenting. Leopold Stokowski, the famous conductor, is going to work with us on an idea of combining fine music with animated cartoons. He wants to make great symphonies popular with people all over the world. After that, we're... Gosh, look at the clock. I've got to start running again. Good night. I wish you the greatest success of your career, Walt. Good night. Fifi, I don't care whether I get anything for Christmas or not, just as long as I got you. Because you see, ain't got nothing, don't need lots. I'm as plain as can be. Don't need motors or costly yachts. No fancy trimmings for me. Never gonna have a million. Never gonna retire Oh, don't laugh at me, honey When I tell you my greatest desire I want to be in Winchell's column Honestly, baby, I do So he can say that I'm that way About swelling at you To be in Winchell's column And if we ever could stray He could send a lot of scallops To Monsieur Cupid For taking you away And if I phone you I'm too busy And can't be home till late He'll speak of that blonde I was out with You can go where you want to go Do what you want to do Je ne crois pas pourquoi vous êtes ainsi méchant garçon Vous me dites que vous n'aimez pas Je n'ai pas ça du tout that's right, Miss Fifi. Fire Chief is the best guest, Linda. <laughs> we both want to be in Winchell's column. My, what a thrill it will be. With dots and dashes from coast to coast, he'll tell the world I love you most. He'll be back in a flash with a flash to say. To say that you are meant for me. Yesterday... I received a letter from an eight-year-old boy in Pennsylvania. With his permission, I'm answering him publicly. Dear Tommy, I'm just wondering if you haven't been a bit hasty regarding Santa Claus. I must admit that I, too, have been a little suspicious. Like yourself, I've never seen the real Santa Claus face to face. But look, Tommy, we've never seen God either, have we? But we have felt his influence. He's come to us from places much farther than the North Pole and squeezed through much tighter spaces than even the narrowest chimney and brought us gifts far more precious than playthings. Yes, there is a Santa Claus. Even though I recall many Christmases when I got nothing in my stocking and at least a couple when I didn't even have a stocking, I lost faith then too. I thought maybe Santa Claus was a fake. But I was just a little boy then, Tommy, like you. I know better now. You see, you've got to grow up before you know for sure. Santa Claus is the spirit of cheerful giving. It's only kids, Tommy, and just a very, very few of them who don't believe. Santa Claus is coming. Something sweet to me Jo, 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 do away When the snow is on the 
ground And trees he could be found You did something sweet to me You drove, drove, drove the way out Be as warm around you da 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 They think it's divine ba -de -ba -de -ba. I'm so wild about you, baby And it's out of your mind When the snow was on the ground And trees he could be found You did something sweet to me Gentlemen, you didn't expect to meet Jello again. This is Jack Benny talking. Will you get a will you get away from here? Is this Wednesday night or not? Well <laughs> Gene is the official candid cameraman for the popular radio magazine, The Radio Guy. Gene, you're out here in Hollywood doing candid camera work on some of the radio shows, aren't you? Yes, Fred, I've been shooting all the shows originating from the West Coast here. You have, huh? What shows have you done recently? Well, so far I've done the Hollywood Mardi Gras, the Burns and Allen show, uh, Phil Baker, and then uh, uh, I that... think that fellow sitting over there in the corner was on one of them. Oh, Mr. Benny? Uh, that, that, that's oh. the one, yeah, that's the one. Well, the, uh... <laughs> you'll know as soon as you get the things developed. Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> if there's any doubt... <laughs> If there's any doubt as to what's been going on, Gene, and your camera, as soon as you get the scripts developed, you can let us know. When are these going to be in, these pictures you've been snapping? I saw you taking some at our dress rehearsal today. When are they going to be in Radio Guide? Well, these pictures that I've taken today will be in your issue of Radio Guide on January 7th. January 7th, That's eh? right. And uh, you do... I heard you humming at your work, you know, the other day, and that is the reason why we've uh, sort of invited you to carol for us this evening, Gene. Do you, uh, do you do uh, much uh, singing ad libitum besides your camera work? Well, I do a lot of singing in the dark room where nobody can hear me. Well, well that's... <laughs> but tonight you're going to come right out with the lights on and see what happens, sir. Huh? Do you prefer photography to, to singing? Well, they sort of both work hand in hand. Well, they do in a way at that. The only difference is that a photographer would be apt to tell other people to look out for little birdie, whereas the singer would have to look out for the little birdie himself. <laughs> 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 but, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, all right, Gene, I guess we have exhausted the fun uh, for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we mustn't be too funny now because Mr. Benny is coming along with a wham shortly. And we... <laughs> What are you going to sing, Gene? Well, there's a new tune called Rosalie that seems to be pretty popular today. Rosalie from the picture of the same name? That's right. <laughs> All right. Rosalie, thank you. On Friday night, the Paul Jervis String Ensemble will... Uh, do you mind if I interrupt, Mr. Allen? Why, no, Portland. Into each life some rain must fall, unless, uh, unless one lives in Palm Springs, of course. 
Or unless one is an old maid. What is an old maid to do with no rain falling in her life? If an old maid never gets married, she never gets a shower, does she? Oh, <laughs> tub or shower as long as she's healthy. What is this? Well, one? I've got a big surprise for you tonight, Mr. Allen. Big surprise? Now look. Portland, this is the day of digest publications, con- concentrated foods, and capsule criticism. Couldn't you sense the trend and show up with a little surprise? But this is the biggest thing you've had on the program this year. Hello again for the fourth time. <laughs> now look, Portland, a thing on the program we don't need. Stuff I don't mind, but not a thing. <laughs> but, Mr. Allen, it isn't a thing. This is an old thing to yours from the days of Bodeville. If it's Otto the train seal, throw him a fish and tell him I'm busy. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Fred. If you'll just take your nose, that one you used to talk through, out of that microphone, <laughs> you'll see that it's me. Oh, Jack! Jack Benny! Well, I'm... Ter- wait a minute. There's a reception goes in there. Well, oh. it doesn't have... I was, I was worried there for a minute. I was... Well, you've been on four times. If you want, took a little bit each time, it's better you get it all at once like this. Yeah, right. Let it pile up. Well, I'm terribly sorry, Jack. I didn't notice you. How long have you been standing there? Since 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> They've been using me instead of the bull of a watch time. Say, Jack, did Mary come along with you? No, Porty. She wanted to come over, but she's busy with her Christmas shopping. Christmas shopping? Yeah, right now she's over at Bullock's Wilshire putting me through bankruptcy. <laughs> that gives me an idea. Tally ho, Jack. So long, Forty. Okay. Well, Jack, this is quite a surprise, you dropping in. I didn't know you were going to be here tonight. I didn't know it either, Fred, until I heard you announce it five times last week. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, Freddie. I appreciate that buildup. I'm one guy who knows that it pays to advertise. Now, listen here, Benny. If that's a hint... You're not getting one cent for crawling in here tonight, and you know it. (laughs) Why, Fred, I... uh, Really, I didn't expect to get paid for this. I haven't any more right to take money for working on this program than you have. (laughs) You for a while, eh? Now, uh... Those armchair jokes, they'll hold you for a while. (laughs) Now, hold on there. Hold on there, Benny. That's an insult. Well, if I I was Professor Quiz, I'd say correct. Absolutely correct. And if I was Major Bowes, you'd have left with a unit ten minutes ago. (laughs) Hey, that's nice work if you can get it. You know, Freddy, I wouldn't mind being back in vaudeville again, though, would you? Ah, those were the good old days. Yes, sir. Say, Fred, no kidding, will you ever forget the time... You and I were together at the Orpheum Theater in Sioux City, Iowa. Yeah. Only I was on the stage. (laughs) I don't care, Freddie. I made more money selling peanuts in one day than you did all week. (laughs) Well, Jack, I didn't make much money in those days, but I was a pretty good juggler. Remember how I used to toss those Indian clubs in the air and do a funny monologue at the same time? I sure do. And, Fred, you remember when you dropped those clubs? Uh, you'd let him lay there right alongside of your joke. <laughs> yep. Well, you ought to know. You swept up the theater every night. <laughs> I did not. I used to stay in the theater late just to practice my violin. And you should have stuck to your broom. <laughs> I should have stuck to my own program, too. Right? Yeah. I had to ask for this yet, huh? Well, you had to write well, it yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, Fred, anyway, a lot of water has gone over the darn since then, huh? Over the darn? Yes, Fred, you know how careful we have to be. <laughs> but just think, Freddie, just think, here we are, both in Hollywood and both of us in pictures. It does seem unreasonable, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Of course, Fred, maybe I shouldn't point this out, but I, uh, I do make a lot more pictures than you do. Well, Jack, there's so little of you in each one, you have to make more. <laughs> oh, is that why they do it? <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. How do you like pictures, Fred? Fine, Jack. I just finished one called Sally, Irene, and Mary. I'm leaving for New York next week. 
Oh, they're releasing you instead of the picture. <laughs> now, Benny, if you're here to drip venom, heed your promiscuous spattering, and remember that retribution is the trailer that follows oral pollution. <laughs> Alan, you're just lucky I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, I had a hunch you were going back east, Fred, and that's why I came up here to see you. Have you decided uh, which way you're going back? I mean, uh, which form of transportation? Well, I was going to take the boat and go through Panama. But I've got a hat, so oh. I decided to... Uh, <laughs> I decided to take the train. Well, Fred, I, of course, I don't want to influence you one way or the other, but uh, have you ever thought of driving back east? You know, by automobile? Uh, what kind of an automobile? Now, don't rush me. <laughs> and it's in good condition, too. <laughs> no kidding. Would you like to drive back home, Freddy? No, Jack. I'll uh, I'll stick to the chief. Well, if you'd rather hang around with India. <laughs> the chief is a train, as you will find out when you finish your next picture, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Say, what are you trying to get at, anyway? Well, Fred, I own a Maxwell. And I thought that... You if... don't think you can palm that tin nightmare off on me, I hope. <laughs> Why, I wouldn't be found dead in that car. Say, you're no better than the engine. <laughs> Why, the engine in that steam cabinet is so dead, the front wheels are nothing but rubber pallbearers. <laughs> Where is that uncovered wagon? It's right outside the door. Hey, boys, boys. Yes, yes Mr. Manning. Uh, will you drive my Maxwell in, please? Oh, sure. Now, be careful, fellas. It's a high-powered car there, you know. Right in here, boys. Right in here. Well, uh, want us to leave it right here, Mr. Benny? Yes, yes, thanks, fellas. Hey, what's, what's that noise? Noise? I'll cut off the motor so we can hear it. That's better. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mr. Benny, I guess this belongs to you. Oh, the door. Yes, thanks. <laughs> I, uh, I went to close it and it came off in my hand. <laughs> well, you can stick it back on with a little new skin, Jack. <laughs> Say, what's that bottle of scotch doing tight on the front? That's for the radiator on New Year's Eve. <laughs> it looks like the car's got a hangover already. Benny, you may not be a snake in the grass, but you're sure hanging around with a the rattler there. That's libel, Alan. And if I had my writers here, what we'd call you. <laughs> be a poor bell rag. Huh? Say, what's the... Say, who started it? <laughs> Say, what was that? Did the engine drop out? No, Smarty, it's the new sunken motor. <laughs> and listen to this horn. That note is by Stakowski. <laughs> well, how, how, is, how is the car on gas? Well, I get about four miles to the court. <laughs> if I insist, of if course. You, uh, <laughs> if you put your foot down. Yes, yes. Well, uh, <laughs> how much does that make to the gallon? Well, I never put in a gallon. I don't believe in spoiling a car. You know how it is with gas tanks. Easy come, easy go. Well, Alan, what do you say? Well, now that I've had a good look at this bear trap, Jack, I know why the Maxwell people went into the coffee business. <laughs> Now, Freddie, I'm not begging you to take this car, only I thought, well, you walk all the time, you're not getting any younger. I think you ought to take your varicose veins out for a spin once in a while. <laughs> what are you asking for this Rhapsody and Junk? <laughs> I'm asking $95 FOB. <laughs> FOB for old Benny. <laughs> How about it, Fred? Say, if you don't know, <laughs> laughing at your next Sunday show already. <laughs> I can't wait. If you don't know, <laughs> I'd give a thousand dollars if I could think of an answer right now. <laughs> if you don't know by now that I don't want that car, you ought to have your skull thinned. All right, Fred, as long as you don't want to buy it, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll wrap it in cellophane, tie a big red ribbon around it, and give it here for Christmas. How's that? If I wake up Christmas morning and find that monstrosity in my stocking, I'll go barefooted the rest of my life. <laughs> that would be nothing new for you, you hillbilly. 
So you don't even want it for a present, huh? I don't want it present, past, or future. You can take that animated skillet. All right, Fred, all right. I merely wanted to be a good fellow, that's all. If you don't want the car, and I think you don't, I'll be on my way. No hard feelings, I hope. No, Jack, I haven't anything against you, not Benny the man. No. I'm just not in the market, that's all. I hope I didn't offend you. Oh, no, Freddy, I'll just have to sell it to some other uh, guy. <laughs> Merry Christmas, old boy. Same to you, Jack, and good luck. Thanks, Freddy. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, what was that, Jack? That's what my car thinks of you, Alan. <laughs> Go on, everybody. Hello. Hummingbird Conservation Project, Professor Beak speaking. Two million dollars for a hummingbird community bird bath in Florida. I'll mail your check Monday. Goodbye. <laughs> here, what are you doing here? Merry Christmas. I'm Santa Claus. Santa Claus? One of the Wagner Act clauses? No, no. I'm a mythical character. Oh, a friend of Jim Farley's, eh? <laughs> no, no. I come down from the North Pole once a year to give things away. I give and give all up and down the land to make people happy. You do? Well, you'd better go back to the Pole, Fatty. But I'm Santa Claus. No, you're not. The government is Santa Claus today. <laughs> Thanks for listening to 1937 Part 23, the Soundscapes Audio Montage Series Number 32, From When Radio Ruled. I'm Mike Gillette, your host. When Radio Ruled and the Soundscape Series are before TV productions. Copyright 2022.